presence of the Most High God. We thank God for how He has kept us over these past few days. He has secured our hearts. We pray that He is continuing to secure your heart and your mind as we continue to look at this Jesus that is, has reached out to us, this God that has reached out to us and, and used His Son to communicate His undying love through the hands of this evangelistic Jesus. And if you will allow us to continue uh, with this subject matter on this morning, get your Bibles. Uh, your holy scriptures in whichever form you read them, whether it be in paperback form or if you have it electronically, we ask you to join us. In John chapter 6 is where we are going to uh, begin our springboard here this morning as we talk about faith and as we talk about uh, having faith in Jesus. And that's important. It's important in the world that we live in because uh, there are so many that do not embrace faith in Jesus Christ. And God has reached out to the world and demonstrated his love through faith and demonstrated his love and calling us to faith and calling us to, to faith that is rooted and grounded in the demonstration of his love as he's demonstrated it through the free hand, through the free gift of his son. And we share that with you this morning because of the times. We share that with you this morning because it is a message that is relevant in the age that we live in. People are resistant to a Jesus. People are resistant to a Christ. Even, even the concept of a Christ that has come from heaven, a Christ that has demonstrated his power and demonstrated his connection to God. So in John chapter 6, John is really good as one of the gospel writers of capturing the words of Jesus and communicating them. And really good to at shining a light that is a light that is directly on Jesus as God. And in John chapter 6, John gives us some of the words of Jesus. In verse number 26, Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, You see me not because you saw the miracles, Jesus is addressing a crowd of people uh, that he has, has just fed. And, and he's pointing out something that's rather astonishing. You all have witnessed me operating in the world, and, and such is true for many of us. Today, we, we've witnessed the hand of God in our lives. We've witnessed and we've been beneficiaries of the grace of God. We've seen and been privy to the power of God. And yet, <coughs> there still is in many of us and in many of our lives a false following. And, and, if, we can, and if we can call it that because in some, there's not even that degree of faith. But Jesus, as he looks at these people, he says, you see me not because you saw the miracles, but uh, because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Now, I realize that, that the only reason you're following me is because you want uh, to, to, to get something from me. 
Uh, you have something to gain. And, and so you're, you're following me because uh, when your stomach gets hungry, I, I feel your bellies. You're, you're following me because uh, when you're thirsty, I give you drink. Are you following me because uh, when you're naked, I, I clothe you? Jesus is saying, I realize that uh, our, our relationship isn't, isn't really, truly, properly grounded and based on faith. But you're following me for a specific reason. You're following me for what you can get. And there are many people whose faith in God is waning, whose faith in God is lacking. And I wonder, if you were to really check yourself, are you struggling in your faith? Do you have a lack of faith because of what God has not given you? And will you only serve him? And, and do you only serve him when he is servicing you? When he is servicing your needs, when he is servicing your wants, when he is satisfying your personal desires. And so Jesus is saying, I, I realize that you're following me for your own selfish motives. And then Jesus goes in verse number 27 to give an encouragement. Uh, what is that encouragement? Labor not for the meat which perisheth. Yeah, the thing that you're going after is going to fade away. It's going to pass away. And Jesus is saying, don't let that be your primary focus. Labor not for the meat that perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life. But which the Son of Man, he says, shall give unto you. I am the one that's able to give that unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? There's a question we encourage you to ask yourself. What is it uh, that you could do personally so that you are found working the work of God, uh, that you are found in the will of God? Jesus answered to them and said, This is the work of God. Watch this. Look at how simple this is. This is the work of God that ye believe on him whom he has sent. This is the work of God that you believe on him and whom he has sent. And doctrinal point number one is simple, but it's resounding. Jesus wants all to believe in him. <coughs> Jesus wants all to believe in him. And, and it's a simple in, in encouragement to, to believe on Jesus. And why is that important? You know, we live in a world, I, I, I remember always, some years ago, encountering people who struggled with faith. <coughs> I, I, I remember encountering people who, 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 who just were, were, were not really altogether convinced or those if they went to church they they were not altogether sold out but but it's a new day now we 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 are living in a strange time we are living in a time where uh, it, it, it used to be a time where people struggled in faith but now we're living in a time where there's just a uh, to lack faith, but it's another thing to uh, not to believe in anything at all. And, and, and that's where we are today. That's, that's the world we're living in today. Uh, it's, it's the atheists. It's, it's the move of the atheists. Uh, it's the move of the unbeliever. And their encouragement is resounding. The thing that they're saying, if you can call encouragement 
and there is no good reason for me to spend hours upon hours arguing against people who do believe in Easter Bunny. But that's not good enough. Uh, it's not good enough for you not to just have faith. You have to get somebody else in the same boat that you are in. And here's a message that's completely antithetical to what Jesus teaches. Now, I, I, I used to wonder, why is this such a difficult thing? And here's what I found out. What, what we have with the new non-believer, or what we have with the new agnostic, what we have with the new atheist is they're going around now saying, not only do I not believe in God, not only is there not a God, but now the new atheist is saying, there was never a Jesus. Jesus never existed. And, and most good historians, some of which are atheists, Look at other atheists, I'll, I'll quote Bart Ehrman. Bart Ehrman says, those of you who are atheists are really making us atheists look bad because you're going around saying stuff that's silly. The majority of historians, although we don't agree that Jesus is God, we still say he existed. But the new atheists, the new agnostic is not content with saying we don't want to follow him. Now, we want to even erase the fact of if he even existed. It's interesting to the fact that at least 2,000 years later, we're still talking about and we are still quoting someone that you say never existed. And that's the struggle that we have in the world. That's the struggle that we are encountering in the world. And the truth of the matter is I'm afraid. I'm afraid that their preaching is getting louder and louder. And they're winning more converts. And the reason they're winning more converts, they're winning more converts from the church. And the reason they're winning converts from the church is not that our message isn't being preached and it's not that our message is not sound. It's just that you are not rooted and grounded in the faith. One argument that's presented by the atheists is, well, if Jesus existed, why can't we find any documents about him? And, and, and what a struggle it is. It, it, they, they want to discount the gospels that we are reading. They want to discount the Bible and say, well, what else do you have? We, we have a whole compilation of things written about a man and written about God that you say does not exist. And you say, well, throw that away and what else do you have? And I promise you this, whoever you are, wherever you are, a thousand years from now, what will be the evidence that you exist? years from now, what will be the proof that you were ever here? That's man's struggle. We always want to bring validation to our existence. That's why we are always, we, we are always writing or we're always looking and someone has, has spray painted or someone has drawn in some obscure location. Uh, Jerome was here. That too will fade away. And Jesus here is calling us to faith and calling us to remember our faith and calling us to be steady and calling us to be sure, calling us to be rooted, calling us to be grounded. Jesus says something we often read this at funerals because we're trying to encourage you. And, and that's another thing I, I don't get about the atheists. What, what are they going to tell you at your funeral? Your mama's dead. Your, your brother's dead. Your, 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 your loved one is gone. And what is the hope that they're able to offer you? Well, here's the hope that comes from Jesus. In John chapter 14, Jesus says, Let not your heart 
You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you, Jesus said, Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. That where I am, there you may be also. Yeah, and if I go to prepare this place for you, I will come and I will receive you unto myself again. And where I'm going, you know. And guess what? This is what Jesus said to his disciples, to those who are following him. Where I'm going, you know. You know where I'm going. And the way to get to me, you know, that's for those who are who are tossed about like a ship without a sail. Jesus says, those who are mine, where I'm going, you know how to get there. Thomas said unto him, Lord, uh, how can we know where you're going and how can you be know the way? Jesus' response to him, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Here's a grandiose statement made by Jesus. I am the way. Jesus has set himself against all of the religions of the world. Jesus has directly challenged all of the faith statements that you can have. Jesus is saying, to 
do to satisfy uh, your curiosity. Take your finger and put it in, in, in my hand and, and take your fingers and thrust them in my side. And Thomas says, my Lord and my God, I, I believe now, Jesus. And Jesus says, Thomas, uh, you believe because you saw Receive 
you again. I, I'm talking about a place you've never been and a place you've never seen. And I'm trying to get you to that place. And in order for me to do that, I have to grow your faith. I have to strengthen you. So here he said, I am the bread of life. Eat this bread. I am the water of life. Uh, as he's talking to the woman up now at, at the well. And Jesus says to her, I am the water. If you drink from this water, you'll never thirst again. She said to him, Lord, evermore give us this water. But he says, I have said to you in verse number 36, they are ye, that ye also have seen me and believe not. Imagine that. You see, these men are saying, show us a sign. Listen, atheist, listen, agnostic, or listen, non-believer, listen, those who are weak in the faith, because we often think, well, if, if, if God would just do this, then I believe that Jesus is saying, no, that's wrong, that's not right. Because I'm showing you, you've seen the signs, you've, you've seen the miracles, or you've seen the wonders, or you, you've received the grace of God, you're experiencing the mercy of God, and yet and still you do not believe. And if all that God has done for you does not strengthen your faith, if God, if all that God has done for you does not encourage you in the faith, uh, if God giving you breath and, and God giving you life and, and God giving you family and, and God giving you a job and God giving you a home and God securing you and feeding, if this is not enough for you to believe in the true and living God then what, what will suffice? And so he's communicating to us. He said, Jesus said, I, I've shown you this. You've seen me and yet you still do not believe. All that the Father give me shall come to me. And him that comes to me I will in no wise cast him out. He says this for, verse number 38, for I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the will of the Father which sent me, that all which he has given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me. That everyone which seeth the Son and believes on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him again at the third day, at the last day. Here he is. Jesus is saying, I, 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 I'm not from this world. And this is the reason I don't, I don't get wrapped up in your political struggles. I, I'm not this world. This is the reason I don't need to sit on your thrones. I'm not, I'm not from this world. This was something he had to share with Pilate. As people were saying, oh, uh, he says he's the king of the Jews. And Pilate says, well, are you king? Are, are you coming to take, take my, my job? Are you coming to take my spot? And Jesus says, Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. He wants us to, as, 
that's the Colossian writer says in Colossians chapter 3, set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. In John chapter 6, the writer goes on, John goes on to say this in verse number 41. The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he says, I came down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. No man can come unto me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all Jesus said, listen, you got to hear it. And once you hear it, you got to believe what you hear. And there are many voices in the world, those voices are growing louder, who are saying, don't believe that, don't believe that. Jesus says, no, when, when you hear it, you have to believe it. And then and, and you have to allow God to draw you. And there are some who will never, who will never come to me uh, because the Father is keeping them but those who hear, those who open themselves to hearing, and, and uh, those who open themselves to understanding, the Father is drawing them close to me. Not that any man has seen the Father, save he which is of God. Uh, he has seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Doctrinal point number three. Jesus can give you something no one else can give. Yeah, Jesus can give you something no one else could give. Jesus is promising everlasting life. What's the alternative? Hellfire and damnation. Yeah, Jesus is promising something no one else can promise. Everlasting life. And who doesn't want to live? Who does not want to live? Now what, what lies in each and every one of us is a That the non-believer are afraid 
frequently engaging in an activity that causes you to choose death. We're here today to speak life to you. We're here today to encourage you to choose life and to reject death because the thing that Jesus is extending is something no one else can offer. Jesus is saying, I stand before you today and I offer you life. The agnostic preacher, I call them the new religion. They are the new church. Amen. You know, I say their Bible is the new, their new, they tell you don't believe in the Bible. They have a Bible they're preaching. It's science. They say believe in the science book. And the proposals you make, they are, they are, they are pretty good. They are, they are word, they are worthy of, of giving pause. They, they are worthy of being thought about. But you know, the scientists always lose me. You always lose me at this point. You tell me that the world started with the Big Bang. And what you're saying is, one day there was nothing. And then, bang! There was something. Are you offended 
I, I know it's difficult, I, I, I know it's hard to grasp, and I know it's hard to bear, but Jesus is saying, are you offended by what I say? Are, are you offended by what I do? Are you put off? Does it, does it make you turn away? Does it lead you uh, not to follow anymore? Because although it's hard, Jesus says, I, if, 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 you can, if you can embrace the difficulty, the reward, the thing that you gain is everlasting life. So what should we do? It's a simple, simple inscription. What should we do? Put your faith in him. In a world where faith in God, in a world where faith in Christ is, is being pushed aside, we're still encouraging you to seek, to seek a creator, to seek to be connected to the one that has made you. And he's looking to connect with us through his son as he has come to this evangelistic ministry on this earth. We encourage you to allow him to have place in your life on this day and in days to come. God bless you.